What's up guys? I'm Ryan with Ryan Epps Fishing and in today's video we are going to be starting a new video series here on the channel and basically what we're going to be doing in these videos we're going to kind of sprinkle them in throughout the year and I want to talk about sonar units. Uh, we've all spent a lot of money on them and you want to get the best out of those sonar units and I know that a lot of people out there are uh, intimidated by them are not sure about what they need to do, not sure about what they're seeing, and hopefully throughout the year, we're gonna to try to fix all that. So we're gonna primarily focus on Lowrance and Humminbird, uh, but this stuff can be used across the board with all brands. So today's video, we're gonna start very basic. We're gonna be starting with some 2D sonar stuff, mainly the frequencies uh, that you're gonna see in your 2D sonar. Uh, we're going to do chirp sonar on another video. Today we're going to primarily stick to your basic 2D sonar frequencies. And hopefully uh, by the end of today's video, you're going to know when, where, why. Uh, you want to pick all these uh, different frequencies. And basically when you do pick them, what's going on underneath the water under your boat there? Uh, it's important to understand and we're going to cover it all today. So y'all sit back, relax. Hope y'all enjoy today's video. In today's video, we are going to cover the three basic 2D sonar settings that you're going to encounter on a Lowrance and Humminbird. Now, the first two, 83 and 200 kilohertz, you're going to find those on both your Lowrance and your Humminbird. This setting right here is going to be something that's unique to Humminbird. That's your 83-200 dual beam sonar. So, these are the three options we're going to cover today. We're not going to get into chirp sonar today. That's going to be another video for another day. Today we are going to start out with the bare basics. So without further ado, first thing we're going to do, we're going to hop on the Lowrance. I'm going to show you all how you can toggle between these two and actually pick which kilohertz beam you're going to want to work with for that particular day. Once we do that, we're gonna hop over on the Humminbird Helix. We're gonna do the same thing there, and then we're gonna get into some specifics on when, where, why, um, all the good stuff about each one of these different frequencies and how they're gonna help you throughout the day. So, let's go see how we choose one or the other. So, on my Lowrance here, from my home screen, uh, we're just gonna go to the Sonar tab and I've got it stopped here. You would start seeing your sonar recordings right here. Now on your right hand side in our drop down menu, we've got a frequency tab. And you can see on this particular unit, I've got 200 kilohertz, 83, high chirp and medium chirp options. So for 83 and 200 kilohertz, you're just gonna tap whichever one that you want. Back, now you're displaying on 83 kilohertz beam. 200, now you're displaying on your 200 kilohertz beam. That's the Lowrance version. We'll go talk about the Humminbird. We're on the Humminbird now. This unit right here is a Humminbird Helix 9. And we're gonna hit menu one time from our standard 2D sonar screen. Gonna hit it one more time to bring up our full menu options. Now, if you go over here to your sonar settings, right here is how you're going to adjust between the different frequencies. So if you arrow over all the way to your left, there's gonna be your 83 kilohertz sonar setting. One over to the right is going to be your 200 kilohertz sonar setting. And then one more over, there's your dual beam 83, 200 kilohertz sonar setting. All right, so now that you know how to get on your sonar there and pick and choose between one frequency or the other, let's talk about these individual frequencies a little bit more. And we're gonna start with 83 kilohertz, all right? Now, with any 2D sonar beam, it's gonna broadcast a cone down in the water, and we're gonna represent our search grid by this circle right here. Now, your 83 kilohertz beam is gonna be the largest 
uh, of the two individual beams, all right? It's gonna give you your largest search grid. And that's gonna be relative to depth. So let's say that we are graphing in a depth range of 30 foot. So it's 30 foot from the transducer to the lake bed right there. Now, what this means is with the 83 kilohertz, a general rule of thumb is your search grid is gonna match your depth. All right, so in 30 foot of water, we're looking at a search range right here, a diameter of your cone. It's gonna be roughly 30 foot. You're scanning a search grid of about 30 foot down there at the base of your cone, all right? All right, now on the other hand, with the 200 kilohertz beam, this is gonna be the narrower of the two 2D sonar beams. And it's gonna show you a smaller search grid, but in relation to depth, and once again, we use 30 foot of water. As a general rule of thumb, your 200 kilohertz beam is gonna show you a search area that's gonna be one third of your depth, all right? So in 30 foot of water, we're gonna be looking at a diameter here of 10 foot, all right? So you're scanning a search area of roughly 10 foot in 30 foot of water with the 200 kilohertz sonar beam. So, all right, so we've already said that with Lowrance, you are either gonna pick 83 or you're gonna pick 200 kilohertz in uh, most situations, unless you have a special transducer or you're running chirp or something of that nature, it's gonna be 83 or 200. Now, on the Humminbird unit, it's got something called dual beam, all right? And dual beam is a combination of 83 and 200 kilohertz. So to represent this, we're gonna do our 83 kilohertz sonar beam, and we're also gonna throw our 200 kilohertz narrower sonar beam right there in the middle of it. Now this dual beam, when you have that turned on, it's gonna send the large 83 beam and the smaller 200 kilohertz beam out at the same time time all right now the theory behind this is is that you get the larger search grid with the 83 while you're also throwing that 200 narrower higher detailed smaller search beam out at the same time to kind of give you the best of both worlds now one thing that i want to go over with y'all before we move off of this dual beam setting right here on the hummingbirds is one thing to keep in mind is when you're running a single screen on your Humminbird unit and you're running dual beam, okay, let's say that you see a school of fish on your sonar. Uh, just from an initial look, you're not going to know which beam this is in. Now, if we're in 30 foot of water, that means that this inside 200 kilohertz beam is looking at a range of 10 foot. And your outside beam, your 83 kilohertz beam is looking in a range of 30 foot. All right, so on just a single screen, that school of fish could either be within this 10 foot beam or this 30 foot beam, all right? And I'm gonna show you a real easy way to help you kind of pinpoint where that school of fish is and in what actual sonar beam that school of fish is in uh, by just doing a simple setting on your hummingbird unit. And so we're gonna go up there and get on the hummingbird helix and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to kind of help me pinpoint a location of these fish within these two beams that are being sent out uh, at the same time. How do you know where a fish is positioned and in what beam that it's in on here. So the easiest way that you can do that, there's a specific display uh, that you can put this on to help you with that. And if you go and hit menu twice, all right, we're gonna scroll over here to this eye symbol, which is gonna be your views. And I want you to scroll down 
and make sure that you have split sonar view uh, over there to visible. And as long as you do that, then you can hit your views button and we're going to go through until we're on this screen right here. Now, in a normal scenario, you can see that we've got a split screen right here. And in a normal scenario, you would be getting two 2D sonar images at the same time here, split right down the middle. And on this side right here, we're getting our 200 kilohertz sonar beam. So everything on this right side of the split screen is going to be stuff that's showing up in your 200 kilohertz beam. Everything on the left side split screen over here is everything in your 83 kilohertz sonar. Let's go over two things that I've heard quite a bit um, through talking about fishing with people and hearing about their day out on the lake. And uh, y'all don't know it yet, but that is a boat right there. And uh, this is going to be our transducer. That's a big transducer right there. You ought to be able to see a whole bunch of crap right there on that. This is going to be your sonar unit. And we're going to put a C here to represent that that is your console. All right. So a lot of times I've heard that, uh, you know, you're talking fishing with people and they'll say, I caught a fish that I never saw on my sonar screen. All right. Well, I'm going to explain to y'all how easy that is to happen right here. So down here at your transducer, let's say that you're running 200 kilohertz on your 2D sonar. Now there's our cone going down right there. And here is our search grid at the bottom. Now let's say that we are fishing in 18 foot of water. All right, so as you all just learned before, with the 200 kilohertz beam, one third of our depth, we're looking at a search grid of six foot. All right, it's not a very big search grid. Now, that's going to put, and let's say, you know, I understand that a lot of boats are bigger than this, but let's say you're fishing in a John boat or something, all right? And let's say that this transducer to your console is three foot. Now, I understand in most cases that's going to be a much larger area. But we're just trying to prove a point here. All right. So straight down from your transducer, three foot of that beam is going to extend up under your boat. Three foot of that search grid is going to be behind your boat. All right. Let's say you got a rod holder up here at the console. Uh, let's say you're vertical fishing. Here's your line, and we're going to draw us a nice little fish hook right there. That is an ugly fish hook. That's one of them aftermarket fish hooks you get at the flea market. That's what that is right there. Let's say you got live bait or something out there on it. Now, given that this sonar beam right here, the edge of it, if it's three foot up there to the crack of your butt sitting right there at the console, uh, I'm going to venture to say that if you've got a rod holder and it's pointed forward, this line right here is going to be out in front of this sonar beam. It's only extending up three foot. All right. So we're going to mark some fish here in orange. Now, granted, we're taking into account that this boat is sitting stationary. If it wasn't, you know, and you were moving forward, this line, depending on your weight, would probably start to drift back here a little bit. And you're going to start to see it a little bit in your sonar beam. But for today's demonstration, we're going to say this boat is sitting stationary. Now, here comes some fish right here. We're going to make these orange marks right here fish. Now, given that three foot of this beam is behind the boat, these fish are going to come into your bait right here well before they ever get into this sonar beam right here. So they're going to come along through here, see your bait, rod goes down, you hook up, and you're hooked up before these fish ever get a chance to get back here for you to see them on your graph. All right, so that is a very quick and easy explanation of exactly how this happens. So if this happens to you out on the water, there is nothing wrong with your graph, all right? It merely could be that the frequency that you're on is shooting down a beam that's small enough in relation to the depth of water that you're fishing that it is not covering a large enough grid 
for everything that's going on under the boat to be captured in that beam and displayed on your sonar screen. All right, let's get into the really good stuff here, the stuff that everybody likes to see. All right, let's talk about fish arches. Everybody has seen them that has ever thought about buying a graph. You go to look at it, you're gonna see 2D pictures of these nice, typical, run-of-the-mill fish arches. All right, now, I know that y'all have heard it, everybody's heard it. You may be out there wondering, why am I not seeing fish arches on my graph? Well, let's talk about exactly what has to happen in order for you to get that typical fish arch on your screen. We're gonna draw some fish over here on this side, all right? Now, let's say that our boat is traveling in this direction for no reason other than just to say it all right so we've got our 2d sonar beam being broadcasted down here we are fixing to drive over old fish right here and we are looking for that arch on our screen now in order to get that arch the first thing that's going to happen is this sonar beam is going to come in contact with this fish all right let's say it happens right here now, as soon as this fish starts to enter your sonar beam right here, that's when you're gonna get your initial third of your fish arch, all right? Now, once he gets right here into the strongest section of this beam right here in the center, that's when you're gonna get your thicker, straighter middle section of your fish arch. And to wrap things up, once that fish exits your sonar beam, you're gonna get your last third of your fish arch. If all of those things happen and he goes completely through that beam, you're gonna get the fish arch that you're accustomed to seeing, all right? If it doesn't happen like that, you're not gonna get this, period, okay? So, let's say that only Let's say that you're, you're graphing along here and you only go over half of that fish right there. You're never gonna get that fish arch, all right? You're gonna get these broken arches right here that are gonna look like this, depending on, you know, what direction you're going. And that is a fish nonetheless, all right? That's all I got for y'all today, guys. I hope that this video helped y'all out a little bit, helped you get a little bit more comfortable uh, with your sonar out there and specifically those 2D sonar frequencies. Like I say, these are videos that we're gonna hopefully be doing throughout the year, starting very basic and working up from there. Uh, so y'all stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, that's all I got for y'all today, guys. If you like the videos, make sure you go hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. That's going to let you all know when I put out all my new videos. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I will get back to y'all with any answers I can give you. Until next time, y'all make some time. Get out there on the water and catch you a few. I'm Ryan Epps. Y'all have a good one.